So I found myself being banned from BBC Radio there for quite a while for my contentious behaviour. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the 10 celebrities blacklisted by the BBC. How much money would the BBC have to pay Tom Cruise if I made the joke I'd like to make? <laughs> And John Travolta. <laughs> Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're looking at celebs who don't get on with the Beeb. Let us know what you think of the BBC in the comments. Number 10, Sheila Hancock. And Sheila Hancock has just released her new book, Old Rage, in which, well, she speaks her mind. Decorated actress Sheila Hancock opened up in 2022 about her time being on the BBC's blacklist, which came about because of creative differences between what she wanted for her sketch show and what B producers wanted. No, you're angry. And I don't blame you for being angry. But, I'm, but out of the anger also, Lorraine, I found a sort of piece. The show was called Simply Sheila and aired in 1968, with Hancock saying that because she rowed so much with the BBC's bosses to get a particular sketch into the show, she was put on a blacklist for a decade. You're so right. You're absolutely, you're a very wise woman. Oh, darling, I'm not. Oh, no, you are. She did have a few BBC credits in those years, however, but was eventually allowed to properly return to the company in the early 80s, publicly discussing her treatment on a podcast. Number 9. Jeremy Clarkson It will definitely take something pretty compelling to get him to ever work for the BBC again. On a scale of 1 to 10, how filled are you that Top Gear is nowhere near as successful now that you're not on it? <laughs> It's a hard face to pull this one. Following his unceremonious sacking in 2015, after he punched a producer on Top Gear and the BBC refused to renew his contract, Hammond and May also walked from the show, heading over to Amazon with Clarkson to make the grand tour. James and Richard always yeah. know it's a shame that we, we, we wish them all the best. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Clarkson still makes TV shows for Amazon, including the popular Clarkson's Farm, and clearly has a lot of bad blood for the BBC. However, in 2020, the BBC apparently relaxed its stance and asked Clarkson to come back, which he outright refused. And how will you prepare for the massive hole in your life, emotionally? What, when I don't have James May in it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps this is more of a case of the BBC itself getting blacklisted by a former star. Number 8. Rod Stewart It's not Rod Stewart himself who's been blacklisted by the BBC, but numerous songs of his, to the extent that he's been told what to sing by the BBC more than once. I decided to come to Dublin a few months back and visited Carmainham Jail and the chapel. His cover of Sailing, despite being played across the BBC for years, was one of many numbers banned from play during the Gulf War. The song is probably the most tragic love song. Yeah. I'll ever have occasion to sing. It's extraordinary. But he's also claimed he was forbidden by the Beeb to sing the Irish ballad Grace because the BBC said it was too associated with the IRA and the Troubles and worried about it being seen as anti-English. Finally, during the late Queen's Platinum Jubilee in 2022, he was also ordered by the BBC to sing Sweet Caroline, which he did pretty poorly by some accounts. Number 7. The Markles Well, first obvious question, have you seen any sign yourself of your half-sister Megan trying to make things up with your dad? We have not. Meghan and Prince Harry, of course, regularly appear in the BBC's news cycle, but the Duchess of Sussex's close relatives are apparently not allowed on BBC shows. This all emerged when Meghan's half-sister Samantha, currently engaged in a lawsuit with her, was briefly tipped to appear on Strictly. He was going to stalk Harry and Meghan. He was going to try and follow them around London with a film crew, throwing questions at them if he could get near enough. But the BBC didn't want to be seen to platform someone who causes so much trouble for the royal family. Well, actually, it was my understanding. He was there by, by very special invite uh, by 
the lovely lady Colin Campbell and also GB News. The same rule of politeness doesn't seem to extend to other outlets, however, with Samantha Markle and Meghan's father Thomas frequently showing up on Good Morning Britain over on ITV, and even being suggested as contestants on I'm a Celeb or the Celebrity Big Brother revival. Number 6. Peter Stefanovic Australian journalist Peter Stefanovic is best known for hosting 60 Minutes Australia, which might lead you to wonder, how has an Aussie TV presenter gotten himself in trouble with the BBC? Well, by publicly attacking Boris Johnson in September 2021, when Johnson was still Prime Minister. Well, it would be if it were true, but it's just another lie. CO2 emissions fell by 39% between 1990 and 2018 not from 2010 onwards. Stefanovic put out a viral video directly challenging many of the lies the former PM had told directly to the House of Commons. The economy under this Conservative government has grown by 73%. Another lie. You may know that calling somebody a liar is against the rules of Parliament, and though Stefanovic definitely isn't an MP, he still angered the BBC so much that they refused to cover his reporting. We restored the nurses' bursary. Another lie. A maintenance grant for student nurses is not a return of the student nurses' bursary. Number 5. Vic Hope. For four weeks, radio DJ Vic Hope appeared on Strictly Come Dancing in 2018, until getting voted off. You've got to build your confidence up first and foremost. Mm. There's no point going into it and feeling shattered because that's going to translate. She didn't go quietly, however, questioning the judge's verdict, angering Shirley Ballas and suggesting that the entire show was a fix. Her accusations were severe enough that many began speculating she wouldn't be allowed back onto BBC shows, and indeed, she didn't appear on BBC TV for four years after the Strictly debacle. Me? Yeah. I'm not a dancer. No. I, so I, at school, which was over a decade ago, used to do a little bit of contemporary dance. However, she does still present shows on BBC Radio 1, so it can't have been a particularly severe blacklisting. And who knows, maybe Strictly is fixed. Number 4. John Barrowman Back in 2021, scandals hit the world of Doctor Who, with two former stars, Noel Clarke and John Barrowman, getting caught up in misconduct allegations about their time on the show. Do you think on occasions then, with reflection, that you may have crossed a line? Uh, I think that if it was now, it would be crossing the line. The BBC investigated, and Bowerman has slowly stopped getting telly gigs. Even ITV has dropped him from the rotation of this morning stand-in presenters. I uh, haven't hidden anything. They've been exaggerated, and they've tried to turn them into sexual harassment, which it absolutely is not. However, the blacklist is far from formal, and Bowerman lashed out against the BBC on his Twitter account. But maybe don't take your todger out repeatedly in a work setting, if you don't want to get in trouble for doing exactly that, which he has admitted to. All the people that are making the fuss about it, they weren't there. They don't know the context of things that were done. Like I said, I would never do it now. Number three, Frankie Boyle. Looks like he's pointing her out to a sniper. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what yeah. it is? Bill, Bill considers assassinating Hillary? <laughs> Did Frankie Boyle choose to leave Mock the Week? Or was he sacked? Well, by all accounts, including his own, it was his choice to leave. But his jokes were notorious for landing the BBC in hot water. For four years, he reigned supreme on the Mock the Week panel, with scathing put-downs of celebrities and politicians alike. You're talking now about putting X-ray cameras into yeah. lampposts yeah. to spot <laughs> terrorists carrying guns and stuff. Which isn't really how terrorists work, is it? Come on, let's let's congregate round this brightly lit lamppost. <laughs> he has worked for the BBC since leaving Mock the Week, including on his own show, New World Order. But this was still eight years after he left the panel show. Has John Reid dealt with the problem of overcrowded prisons? He's uh, at least the paedophiles. It definitely took a while for the BBC to get Boyle back on, and he firmly works on his own terms and will not pull his punches. He even celebrated Mock the Week's cancellation. Number 2. John Lydon Though John Lydon is best known as the frontman of the Sex Pistols, it wasn't because of this that he was blacklisted by the BBC, though it probably didn't help, since their songs were all banned by the broadcaster. So who else is on the goner list? Oh, it's endless, believe me. I just want to make a film of it. On film, I'd like to kill Jimmy Savile. Instead, Lydon angled the bee by, way back in 1987, addressing the rumours circulating around one Jimmy Savile in an interview. I bet he's into all kinds of seediness. 
that we all know about, but are not allowed to talk about. The interview was suppressed and Leiden wasn't able to talk about it until 2015, after Savile had died and his crimes became public knowledge. There you are, saying about Jimmy Savile, he was into all kinds of seediness that we all knew about, we weren't allowed to talk about it, I know some rumours. He tried to expose the BBC for its part in the cover-up years ago and got punished for it. Number one, Christopher Eccleston. So, why did you agree to be Doctor Who? Because it was written by Russell T Davis. Another Doctor Who alum, Christopher Eccleston certainly hasn't forgiven the BBC for the shocking way he was treated back in 2005. He was the Doctor who made the revival a massive success and definitely one of its most underrated stars. And he chose to leave after one series to keep his tenure short and sweet. The old series, I think uh, what we've jettisoned is the sexism of the underwritten female role. And it would have been had the BBC not been so annoyed at his decision to leave that they notoriously put him on their list and he struggled to get good roles for years afterwards. Yeah, as Russell has created a whole new array of villains, creatures of his own, uh, to add to the uh, gallery of the last 40 years. Today, his career is the strongest it's ever been, and he's refused to return to Doctor Who for any of its landmark anniversaries after the way he was treated. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo UK and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.